bunch of requests to cover some Symphony X riffs, and I have no problem doing that because Symphony X is one of my favorite bands of all time, and Michael Romeo is one of my favorite guitarists. So today I'm going to cover some Symphony X riffs. Actually, I'm going to cover seven Symphony X riffs. One from each album, starting with the Divine Wings of Tragedy going forward. Before I get into these riffs, let's talk about the guitar tuning. Michael Romeo tunes his guitars one full step down in standard tuning. So D, G, C, F, A, D. And as far as amps go, Michael Romeo uses angle amps, at least he has been recently. So I have a profile of an angle loaded up in my Kemper. And that should give us that Symphony X sound. All of the riffs I'm going to cover in this lesson use the same scale, and it's one of the reasons I chose these riffs in particular. This is a sound that Michael Romeo likes to exploit a lot in his riffing and also in his general songwriting. And the scale he's using is called the Phrygian Dominant Mode. Phrygian Dominant is the fifth mode of the harmonic minor scale. If I take a harmonic minor, and I start on the fifth, one, two, three, four, five, note E, We'll get E, F, G sharp, A, B, C, D, and then back to E. Or if I did that in intervals, you'd have one, flat two, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, flat six, flat seven, and then back to the one. A couple of cool things about Phrygian Dominant, one is the flat two. Give you the instant metal sound. You also have a major third. If you build a chord off the root note, you get a major chord. So you have this exotic, dark sound, but you have a major chord as your root, which is really cool. You can also take this major chord up a half step. If you build it off the flat two, that comes from the scale as well. So this movement of a major chord up and down a half step is a really common Phrygian dominant sound. Another common sound we're going to hear in a lot of these riffs that comes from the Phrygian dominant mode is the diminished seventh arpeggio. And the diminished seventh arpeggio is a symmetrical arpeggio. It's built entirely on minor thirds or the distance of three frets if you're thinking like a guitarist. So if I start on the fifth fret of the A string and go up and down three frets at a time, that's gonna give me a diminished seventh arpeggio. In Phrygian dominant, I'm usually thinking of this as being built off the flat two. So for an E, well, actually D because we're down tuned. I'm gonna say E though because I'm used to playing in standard tuning. We'd build it off F, the flat two. And because this is a symmetrical arpeggio, I could also build it off the third, G sharp, or the fifth B, or the seventh B. And all of those sounds are coming from Phrygian dominant. And the reason that guitar players like to use this sound is because, first of all, it sounds dark, so it's cool and metal. But it's also a symmetrical sound, so you can... Anything you do, if you move it up or down three frets, you're going to be able to play it. Um, so it's really handy under the fingers. And that's kind of why I think Michael Romeo gravitates toward this sound a lot. Uh, he does it in his riffs, as we'll see, but he also does it in a lot of his solos. First up is Sea of Lies off the Divine Wings of Tragedy. If you're familiar with Symphony X, you've probably heard this song because it's one of their most famous tunes. This main riff is constantly pedaling off the open G string. And then doing these pull-offs in between where he's going from the root to the seventh, and then also the flat two to the seventh. So you're getting that Phrygian sound right away. And then there's these classical sequences. This pattern is something I associate with Baroque music. We're constantly going up to a pedal tone on top. And here you've got the major third. So right in the beginning of this riff, you kind of have all of the quintessential Phrygian dominant sounds, flat two and major third. Another thing that Romeo does here is to play a power chord built off the flat five, in this case, D flat. And the flat five does not come from the Phrygian dominant mode, but it is a really common sound in metal, that tritone dissonance, the devil's interval. And my guess would be that Romeo was writing in Phrygian Dominant, he really likes the sound, but he wanted to get something a little bit darker, so he introduced the flat five. And you gotta remember when you're writing, you don't have to stick within one particular scale, even if you like the sound of that scale. It's totally cool to break outside of it because there are no rules when you're writing riffs. The end of this riff goes crazy with that Baroque sequence. <laughs> some tapping. Then you have this cool double tapped. And that's just a three note kind of tap pattern. But you're going to tap twice really quickly with the right hand. Really cool sound. <laughs> 
number two is the main riff from In the Dragon's Den off of Twilight and Olympus, and this one is in E Phrygian dominant. The riff is based on this six note pattern. Starting on the root note of the second fret of the low string, go down, back up to the major third, back to the root. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this repeats, and the second time you play it, you do the top two notes twice. So you get an eight note pattern. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you have six and then eight. And those two patterns go back and forth three times. Then the riff ends with these patterns. And these start on beat four of the third bar. Because we had odd patterns before of six and eight, these ones are not gonna start on the downbeat. So it's five beats of these runs. One, two, three, four. And a couple of these runs use that diminished seventh sound we talked about earlier. Those two back to back give you the diminished seventh sound. And we have this cool chromatic idea. Once again, breaking outside of the key signature here with this first fret. But that's done for two reasons. One is it's a technical reason because it moves your fingers back to where they need to be for the riff. But it's also just a cool harmonic sound to hit that major seventh in this case in the key to help you lead you back to the root note. Riff number three is from the song Evolution off of five, the new mythology suite. This one is also an E Phrygian dominant. Now this riff is crazy fast. It's straight 16th notes at about 160 beats per minute. So keep that in mind if you're trying to learn this, you're gonna need some serious stamina to play this riff. Just like in the Dragon's Den, this riff is based around the second fret of the low string. That's our root note. So it looks like this. Once again, we have all these Phrygian dominant sounds right away. Flat two. Major third. And that's really the trickiest part of this riff to play, is this part where you're moving up to the higher string. It's not too bad at a slower tempo. When you put it up to speed, it's absolutely ridiculous. There's also this variation. You recognize these shapes from the previous riff as well. Once again, pedaling off that lower string with emeralds and pull-offs and doing this diminished sound. So that's the majority of the riff. And then Romeo does these crazy chromatic transition measures. So there's Phrygian dominant stuff happening on the low string. Those same patterns we saw earlier. And then this chromatic thing. There. And Romeo's really just taking advantage of how easy it is to move around chromatically on the guitar. So that creates a nice slippery sound that leads into the next section really well. Next up, we have a riff from Incantations of the Apprentice off the Odyssey. This one is in D Phrygian dominant. This riff is based off the open low string, in this case D, and it's a little bit slower than the riffs we just looked at before, so that makes it a little bit easier to play because those other ones are just so dang fast. Uh, but there's a couple of things happening here. First of all, we have a measure of 3-4. Then we have this chromatic idea, which combines a few things we talked about earlier. So you have the chromatic movement, kind of like we had in Evolution. 
We also have the flat five. We talked about in Sea of Lies. So kind of bringing back that flat five sound, but done more as a way of it moving chromatically down. The second half of the riff looks like this. And this is a cool variation on the first half. We get more notes on the low string. We still get these pull-offs. They're slightly higher up within the scale. And you have these cool triplets at the end. Now with riffs that are at a slightly slower tempo, Romeo likes to use triplets to build up the intensity and speed back to the beginning of the riff. And you couldn't really do this with a riff like Evolution because it's just so fast that it would be almost impossible to play triplets. But here, because we're at a slower tempo, you can use these triplets to really ramp into the second half of the riff. <laughs> To see that later in a couple riffs as well. The other thing he's doing here is more chromaticism. So just like in the Dragon's Den, we had that major seven within the Phrygian dominant. Have the same thing here. If you add a major seven to the Phrygian dominant, or if you replace the flat seven with a major seven in Phrygian dominant, I call the Hungarian minor scale. I've also heard it called the double harmonic scale. But this is like a even more exotic version of the Phrygian dominant mode, if it's even possible. Uh, but here he's really kind of just using it as a way to move back to the beginning of the riff. But that sound of the major seven added to Phrygian dominant is a sound that you can exploit really nicely, and I do that quite often myself. <laughs> Next up, we have Domination off of Paradise Lost. This riff's gonna deal with a couple of the things I've covered already. Firstly, pedaling off an open string, in this case, the open C string, at least to start. And you have more triplets, like I talked about in the last riff, to build up the intensity. even more triplets, but these ones are really cool. So if I take out the open string part of this, we essentially have a diminished seventh arpeggio like we've talked about a number of times. The pattern's just moving up every three frets, but you're gonna put the open string at the beginning of each of these patterns. So it's a nice way to combine the diminished seventh and the open strings and the triplets all together. So the riff gets played twice and then it gets moved down to the G string. This is a direct key change to a new key signature, but in a very guitaristic kind of a way. Symphony X likes to do these direct key changes where you take a riff and just move it to a new key. In this case, it's just based on what works well for the guitar. So you have the open strings. So if you want to make it heavier and lower, you might as well just take it one string down, right? And this kind of builds up the intensity ramping towards the verse, which is super heavy. And this idea of shifting keys using open strings is actually something we've seen before. I covered Natural Science by Rush a few months ago in one of my analysis videos. And in that riff,
it just got moved up or down depending on where it was in the riff to kind of change up the color a bit. So this is a pretty common thing to do. If you wanna take a riff and then make it heavier or lighter, you can move it up or down a string and you can have the exact same fingering and it can feel essentially the same to play, but you can get a different sound. But domination takes it one step further, going from G Phrygian dominant down to your low string, D Phrygian dominant. And it does it with this run. And that run is actually in D Phrygian dominant. So you're coming from G Phrygian dominant with these diminished seventh arpeggios. Then directly into D Phrygian dominant. So if you're using a scale run to change keys, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can have the run be in the original key, or you can have it be in the key you're going to. In this case, it's in the key that is going to D Phrygian dominant. And that's kind of instantly setting up that new sound. He could have also done the key he was in before, G Phrygian dominant. Something like that. I think that would have worked just as well. Um, or sometimes I might do a combination. So maybe I would start in G and then move to D. So there's no real wrong or right way to do it. It's kind of based on what you think sounds best. And, and what he did here works really well, but there are other options for if you wanted to change keys with a scale run. Next up, we have the second verse riff off of Prometheus from Iconoclast. This riff is an F Phrygian dominant based off the third fret of the low string. Once again, lots of flat two here. Also the major third. And we have these scale runs that are very classical sounding. We're just going up in seconds. And at the end of the riff, you have triplets, just like we had earlier. There we go. Um, and once again, at a slower speed like this, the triplets are just helping to kind of ramp up the intensity. After that riff in F plays twice, it goes to this riff in D. And that's another example of a direct key change, just like we had in Domination. In this case, going from F down to D. And moving down to D there makes things way heavier and super intense. Now the riff in F was in Phrygian dominant, but this riff in D is actually using the D blues scale. Which is another scale that Romeo likes to riff with. Um, so you don't always have to use the same scale, right? Even if you're direct key changing, you have to direct key change from F Phrygian dominant to D Phrygian dominant, you can change keys and also change scales. Once again, there's no rules when you're riffing. The last riff here comes from the song Nevermore off the latest Symphony X album, Underworld. Just like in the Dragon's Den and Evolution, this one is based in E, or the second fret of the low string. And this one has pretty much all the different things we've talked about. So you have pedaling on this low note, scale runs, in fact the same sort of scale sequences we saw in Prometheus. And you also have diminished seventh in these last runs. That last part is straight diminished seventh. So this one, I think, from a theoretical perspective, is actually probably simpler than the other ones because it's just staying literally right within the Phrygian dominant scale. But from a playing perspective, this is by far the hardest one. I think it's really hard to jump between 
these can low notes and these fast runs it's just kind of awkward and the technique feels jagged between the two because you're not doing straight 16th notes the whole time so um, I would spend a lot of time kind of practicing this one slowly in fact I probably should have practiced this more before I tried to record it but uh, it, it's a really fun riff and I think it's a really good workout for picking and kind of dealing with different rhythms and jumping around right after the part that I played it moves from E up to F sharp <laughs> And then later in the song, it actually happens in D. So this is a Michael Romeo staple to take a riff and move it through different keys to kind of change the color of the riff throughout the song. So there you have it. Seven Symphony X riffs from Seven Symphony X albums. You asked and you received. To be honest, I just scratched the surface on Phrygian dominant riffs in Symphony X music. This is a sound that Michael Romeo uses all the time. I can think of Inferno, of Sins and Shadows, Serpent's Kiss, A Fool's Paradise, a bunch of the riffs in the Odyssey, and that's just off the top of my head. So if you want to sound like Michael Romeo, learn the Phrygian dominant scale and learn to write some riffs in it. And it's part of the reason I actually don't use the Phrygian dominant scale much when I'm writing my own music, because when I do, I feel like I just sound like Michael Romeo. But if you want to get this sound, it's really the best way to do it. So write some riffs in Phrygian dominant and become a progressive power metal god. If you enjoyed this lesson, subscribe, hit the bell notification, like, comment, share, and let me know which other riffs you'd like to see me cover in this new riff lesson series. Till next time, stay proggy.